Welcome to Women Winning Divorce. I am your host, Heather Quick. I am an attorney, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Florida Women's Law Group, the only divorce firm for women by women. I love thinking big, thinking outside the box, creating creative solutions for women, and empowering women to win in all aspects of their life. Our approach at Florida Women's Law Group is to provide women with a strategy to not only achieve their objectives, but win at life. I believe that what may show up as adversity is simply an opportunity to change and improve your life. In each episode, I sit down with innovative professionals and leaders who are focused on how you can be your best self before, during, and after divorce. In these conversations, we are looking at how women can win at life. I have the unique opportunity to meet women when they are at a transition period of life, but that is only the beginning to becoming your best self and winning at life on your terms. With our guests, we enjoy the opportunity to explore ways all women can win and enhance their life, no matter where they are in their journey, because divorce is just a point in life, not the end and not what defines you, rather a catalyst for your growth. Welcome to Women Winning Divorce. Each week we discuss issues, including divorce, alimony, mediation, and other family law issues to provide insight on the journey of women winning divorce. I'm Heather Quick, owner and attorney at Florida Women's Law Group. And today I have the pleasure of being joined by Jenna Jake. Welcome, Jenna. Thank you. Thank you so much, Heather. I'm so excited to be here. Well, it is exciting for us as well. And um, for our listeners, Jenna is a therapist and coach for women post-divorce. Also the mother of two lovely daughters. And um, you having been through your own divorce, understand the pain and the challenge that comes with reinventing your life. Um, and I mean, I mean, this list goes on and on. And you've got a healthcare consulting company and a host of the soul streaker podcast um it's wonderful jenna like that's just a lot you have a lot going on thank you so much yeah i just changed the bottom of my podcast to be soul streaker podcast where single girls rise (gasps) oh i like that focusing it more on everything that single women need to know to rise i think that is fabulous and definitely is going to meet a need without a doubt Um, So I look forward to seeing more episodes of that. And I know many of our listeners are, whether they're excited or not about being single, they'll probably will be soon if they are going through the divorce. And and that's going to be so helpful. Thank you. I hope so. There's so many things to know about being divorced. You know, when you're going through a divorce, there's that emotional side and then there's the practical side, the business side. But I think also post-divorce, there's that practical side of how do I do this home repair? How do I buy a house? And then the emotional side of becoming whoever it is that now you're going to become because the divorce has changed you. But whoever you decide to be, I think that's an intentional process. And you don't want to let that process happen to you. You want to make that happen for yourself. That is a great A great truth, a great statement, right? You don't want it to happen to you. You want to make sure you make those decisions. So, Jenna, can you please tell our listeners a little bit about how you got into coaching women after divorce? I have found that divorce has been my greatest teacher. And I want, and divorce is traumatic. And people get married with the idea of, oh, if it doesn't work out, I'll just get divorced. But it's, it's not something to enter into lightly, marriage or divorce. Mm-hmm. And it's just been an amazing, an amazing opportunity to feel everything. When I found out I first, when I was divorced, I felt every emotion at the same time. <laughs> and I, I want to help women go through that process because it's just something you definitely don't want to go through by yourself. Absolutely. And you have, uh, you have two daughters, correct? Yes. yes. And that adds a whole nother element, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. One of my daughters is autism, so there's a lot of challenges there. Absolutely. And um, yeah, going through that process alone or not really with somebody who can objectively really help you through it, right, without their own agenda. And there's, um, a, lot, there's a lot of support. There's lawyers, mediators, divorce experts, but 
to hold your hand through the process and help you change into who you're going to become and you're becoming and unbecoming at the same time, that's where where I am. I'm not the practical, like, do this, do that in terms of buying a house, things like that. Even though those things are on my podcast or going right. to my podcast, that's not where I am. It's more of an emotional journey. Let's crawl through the crawl space of your soul and figure out who you are now as the butterfly. Right, because you have this opportunity now to reinvent yourself and really tap into your soul. Like, hey, who were you maybe when you got married and who did you think you were going to be? And like, then who are you now, right? Did you put aside maybe the dreams of who you thought you were going to be for somebody else or for life and things that got in the way? And now it's really an opportunity to reinvent yourself, create this great new future, even though it's difficult going through the divorce. And accept that this happened, but it's an opportunity to learn. Absolutely. And to get whatever it is that you didn't get because the marriage didn't work out because two people were a certain way. Now you get to figure out what way was I and how do I not want to be that way again? Because you don't want to end up with the same person in a different outfit. And boy, does that happen. I have seen that happen again and again. And it does. It's like, oh, but they were dressed so differently. Like they weren't the same person until the end. And you're like, they were the same person. Same person. Um, it's amazing how that happens. It, it is amazing. Yes, indeed. But today, so one of the things I want to talk to you about is um, emotional abuse. And so I was wondering if you could, you know, define that for our listeners. I think emotional abuse is when you're in a relationship with somebody and you're not allowed to be you. You have to exile yourself to make someone else happy. And it's hard to find, to, to call it out because you're not, there's no physical marks, but you know inside of you, something's just not right. And you're, if you're making too many excuses for somebody, oh, they're just having a bad day, they're, they're stressed at work or whatever, chances are that's an emotionally abusive relationship that you're in. And, but like you said, it's not, it, it can be just as damaging, um, definitely emotional and verbal abuse, but sometimes it, it's like insidious the way it, it seeps in there because it's not broken bones and bruises and you're not, you may question yourself, right? Is this really happening or am I overthinking this? Am I too sensitive? Yeah. And I think for me personally, this started in childhood with my parents. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't allowed to have a self. And so of course it would be easy for me to marry somebody else where I didn't have a self. This is the first time that I actually have a self because my parents are, I don't, are not in contact because, you know, they have dementia or they're, you know, not nearby or whatever it is. And then, you know, I'm not married anymore. So there's just nobody around influencing me for the first time. And I have to stand up and stand in my power and make decisions. And it's all new. Right. And that can be so scary. It's so scary when you, you've never done that before. It's almost like an arrested development. Mm -hmm. And in what, and like that certainly has to impact your other relationships as well, like friends and family and things like that. I think it has, I think it has, but now that I'm finding myself, it's easier to put boundaries up because mm -hmm. boundaries are really a gift you give to yourself. But if you don't have self-esteem or self-worth, you don't have boundaries because if you're trying to get something from somebody all the time, because you can't, you're not giving it to yourself. You don't have the boundary to protect yourself. And are those things that um, you're able to help? women with um, post-divorce, yes. like helping yes. recognize that. And what are some of the, what are some of the tools and techniques that you use in your coaching that really can help women with this? I think the conversation that we're having in our head is the most important conversation and changing the narrative of what it is you're telling yourself and vowing to never betray yourself again and to love yourself. That's where all the real work is within ourselves. And um, yeah, and that can be tough. Sometimes yeah. that's somewhere you don't really want to look. That's like, I think a lot of times the last place, right? Right. You want to look. 
but you can't expect to have a different life thinking the same thing that you thought yesterday and the day before that. We we tend to go in an emotional groundhog day mm-hmm. and think the same thoughts over and over again and then expect to have a different life. It doesn't work that way. Now, when, um, you know, when we talk about the emotional and verbal abuse with when, why do women stay? You know, have you been able to really kind of pinpoint any of that? Um, yeah, I think they're afraid. They're afraid. Um, they don't know life on their own. It's scary. They, they're afraid they may be financially, they won't be able to support themselves. They don't know any different. They don't even recognize it as abuse or gaslighting. They just think that the person may have an anger management problem and they don't realize that they're being abused to the level that they are. What are some ways women can, or maybe why don't, if you would, for some of our listeners, and we've talked about gaslighting before on this, on this podcast for sure. So, but um, for some women who aren't really sure what that is, what would that look like for them? Just so that they can maybe listen to you and be like, oh, okay, right. Now I know what she's talking about. They feel invalidated. They're criticized. Every time there's a problem, they always have to deal with the problem and then their partner. Their partner's not a part of the solution, but they're part of the problem because they're all making the problem about them. And, you know, I know a lot of women in those types of relationships and often with, you know, a narcissistic personality, they almost feel like they're going crazy because, you know, they feel like, wait, I know, I think I know that right, you're treating me this way, but then you're telling everybody else it's me. And then I'm just not really sure. Like, what is reality? Right. And just the fact that they're doubting, that's probably a sign that they're being gaslit. Because if you're in a healthy relationship, you're not even having these thoughts because there's nothing, there's no drama to begin with that all this is going on. The drama. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Because there's going to be drama, right? Yeah. And all narcissists have victim stories. And they mm-hmm. use a victim story to make you feel bad. I would never, ever date a guy that had a victim story ever again because they haven't worked on their stuff. Right, right. You know? and- so that that's part of it. And um, and, the, and they thought, you know, they had a bad childhood and they feed on that. And then they use that to abuse other people. And, and, you know, when women are, you know, maybe they're saying, okay, I recognize this, this could be me. What are some ways to help them recognize it at the beginning, right? So they're, they're getting, they've getting out, they've gotten out of this relationship. They recognize, hey, that was emotionally abusive. He's a narcissist. How do I know now when I'm starting over? And you look for like the hot, the highs and the lows. So. If you, you're in a relationship with somebody else and they're saying, oh, you're my world. I don't know where I've been without you. You're my oxygen. And it just seems so amazing. They're uh-huh. love bombing you. That is not amazing. That's a red flag. Anything really over the top, any guy that's too charming or, or a woman who's too charming, um, mm-hmm. they're love bombing you and they're going to flip the script on you and make you make it that you're going to be never, you're not going to be able to do anything right in a couple of months once they know they've got you. Anything that's just, I, you know, I, I'm so happy. I want to save. they want to save you. They want to rescue you. They think just over the top when you're with somebody who's healthy, there's a steady state and you never feel like they don't love you, but they're not grandiose about it. That's great. That's true. That grandiose. And right. When you're the best thing, since, uh, you know, sliced bread or anything of that nature, um, the, um, you got to question that, right? Because, like, there's a lot of that that's so, um, feels good, right? It, it feeds feels, your ego, it you know? It feels right to our e- It's like <laughs> sugar in the vein. I can't tell you how many guys right into my vein. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. And and you believe, and, and now that looking back, it's like, oh my God, he was love bombing me, that guy. Oh, so yeah, so it's not, I mean, because it might be like, oh, is this really too much? But it feels so good that there's going to be a part of you that may or may not um, 
want to say no, but it's like understanding and learning like, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I, I think that's, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Like we're going to take our first break, but I think that, you know, we, especially with what you're focusing on after divorce and not, you know, repeating those same patterns, yeah. um, that's a big one, but, um, we're going to take our first break and when we come back, we're going to talk about not only, you know, the impact of emotional divorce, emotional abuse and divorce, but also, you know, after divorce and, and getting over that and why you can work with a coach like Jenna to, to help you do that and create the new you. Um, so while you wait, please visit womenwinningdivorce.com. Please subscribe and check out our resources. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Women Winning Divorce. And today we have the pleasure of having Jenna Jake on our podcast. And she is a divorce coach and specifically works with women after divorce and really, you know, reinventing themselves or maybe finally recognizing their true self and in who they are now that they are no longer married. Jenna, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh my, thank you so much. I am enjoying this conversation. You are amazing. And I love the sense of community and the resources that you have for women, because I think there's no time when a woman feels so lost as when she's going through a divorce. I know so many things change for women. I thank you for saying that because it changes and sometimes they're caught off guard, right? That they didn't really think well, I won't, my social circles won't change as much as it does. And even some of the family relationships or extended family relationships just change. And um, it's important to have a sense of community and support, not only while you're going through this, but afterward. Yeah. Um, so when we're talking about, you know, the reinventing yourself or your about to go, you know, after that divorce, I would love to talk to you about, you know, within your coaching, do you work with women when they are wanting to, or they already are starting to date again? Yes, a hundred percent. Because like you said, we don't want the same thing. You just dressed in a different suit, but it's easy to say that like, there's a lot of work there that probably you, you do with women. In, in really discerning what that is that they don't want. They don't want. Yeah. I mean, they know they don't want the same relationship that they had, but I always like to make sure before they go into the dating pool that they're not going to find the same kind of relationship because what we is familiar to us fools us that this is good. We like it because it's familiar. So date somebody that you don't find so familiar just to try it out. Because you don't want to end up in that same relationship again. And it's subconscious. So you're not as aware of it as you might think you are. And when you're working with women um, in regards to that, do you um, do you kind of do you ever go through a process where you identify what they do want? Because maybe that might be easier to find somebody who matches like what they want in a relationship rather than what they don't want. Or is it easier to identify what they don't want? I think they all really want the same thing. I, I call it the four S's to be seen, supported, sought, sought after. Oh, that was the fourth one. Seen, support, and safe. Right? That's what they really want. So, you know, it's it just, what's ver what, what is your version of that? Mm -hmm. And... And, and, you know, how, how do you, I guess, let's talk about, the, especially the being seen, right? Yeah. Because I think that's true of everybody, but um, how, how do you help a woman um, recognize that in herself and identify how she feels when she is being seen or what? What does that look like for what her? What does that feel like for her? Right. And so yeah. that's where we delve real into her past and was she ever seen before has she, and does she see herself because this mm -hmm. is really about I think a relationship not that you're trying to get something from somebody but you have so much to give that you want to share what you have 
And that's a whole different relationship than trying going into it, trying to get something from someone because that's mm-hmm. getting validation or safety or something outside of you. And then that's what I've learned in my divorce. When that person goes, then where are you? So my question is, what, what are you looking for to, when you're dating to begin with? Are you trying to get something or are you trying to give something? And yeah, I mean, that's, I think most of us do feel, I don't know when having you frame it like that is different for me because I would think most people go into a relationship of what, what you're going to get, not really what you're going to give. Right. And I don't know if I'm wrong, if that's just, I'm selfish, but I kind of, at least that's where my brain first goes. Like you're looking for what's in it for me. Right. And you're looking for love and to feel good because you know, let's face it, we're divorced. We feel rejected on some level. Somebody said no to us. You know, they went really went out of their way to be like, I don't want to be with you anymore. Right. You know, right. it's hurtful. I've been there. Um, and so it's nice to have somebody take you out and approve of you. But for me, someone else's approval, at least is what I found, isn't it became so much less valuable than my own because mm-hmm. it can go, I don't want to be at the mercy of that. Yeah, that, um, I think that is, is, is so true. Um, and you know, with most, especially, you know, starting this next chapter, uh, for most, um, you know, women doing this, they're not really sure, like, should I be coaching or should I be in therapy or both? I mean, how can you speak to that? for our listeners yeah, kind of just I mean, a difference for them like what what's a little bit different about that therapy is really about look you know really going into your past or, or depending on what kind of therapy you're in you're going or whatever you're doing what toolbox they're used the therapist is using but mm-hmm. it's probably a lot of sitting in your pain processing um going into your past where coaching is more action oriented and asking questions and getting you to the next level. I kind of like a combination since I'm in both worlds. Right. Of like, let's, let's keep our heart open. Let's sit in our pain and then let's figure out what we're going to do about it or where we're going to go from here. But I think they're both good and whatever moves the needle is what's right for the person, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I found the tenets of Buddhism has helped me so much in my divorce process, in my healing. This idea of acceptance and just everything is beautiful, a beautiful part of the experience and keeping my heart open to everything and realizing that I'm the only one in here. So I want to make it nice in here and getting a sense of peace. Well, I, and I think that's a, a, a beautiful thought and so true. And I, um, in my experience, I, I've found uh, in working with so many women over the years that that's what they're looking for. We're all looking, we all want that inner peace and that sense of peace. And leading up to a divorce and during a divorce, usually that's missing, I, I have found. And, and so I feel like when you speak to that on the peace part, it, it's really important. Um, and we are um, about ready for our second break. And um, We are, um, when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation with Jenna Jake, who is a divorce coach as well as a therapist. And we're going to start, I think I'm going to ask her some things about, you know, how, how she can help, um, our listeners, if they were like have self-sabotage or if they're really just not sure if, if they can do it again. And I know that she has some thoughts to, to help, um, our listeners overcome that. So while you wait. Please visit womenwinningdivorce.com, check out our resources, and we will be right back. We are back with Jenna Jake, and if you missed the first part of the show, we have been talking about um, her um, her business of divorce coaching, but she also has a therapist background, so it's a little bit different. I think kind of maybe a little bit revved up coaching because she has that background that she discussed in the last segment. And if you missed that, please go to womenwinningdivorce.com and listen to that. 
And if you're enjoying the show so far, please leave us a five-star review in order to allow other women to find our content. So Jenna, I what about self-sabotage? I am betting you have helped a lot of women with that. Yes. I think we are programmed to sabotage ourselves. What? Why? Why? I know we don't want to do that. Yeah, men don't do this. <laughs> Why do we do this? I don't know. And then, you know, it's just, it's not, it, it just works against us. And we're supposed to be nice and polite and serve and do all these things, which I agree. I'm a big proponent of, I'm showing up for service, but not at the expense of myself. And how can you, and how do you help women with that? Because I'm sure at first it's like, even just recognizing yeah. where there are these acts of self-sabotage. It, it's a mindset shift. I always bring up two examples. One is a candle where you can light someone else's candle and not do anything to your own, diminish your own. Okay. And the second I bring example I bring up is shine your light because it's selfish not to. We think we're being demure or polite. But it's really selfish. When you think about, I always give the example of Barbara Streisand. If she said, I just, I'm not going to sing. I'm not that good. There's so many other singers. She would have cheated us all of her gift. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine a world without Barbara Streisand in it. But <laughs> it's just my age. However, think about that. You know, everybody has a light, a gift. And by them not shining, they're cheating the people that need it. I think um, I think that's a great point, and I also think like you know, in, within what I do within divorce, and many times I have that conversation with women because they might be in just a a dysfunctional relationship, something that's not working, and they're not showing up as their best self. And then what good are they doing, right? Because you, you're sabotaging yourself you're staying kind of constrained in this relationship but if you could be free you could have so much more to offer to everybody else your and usually that includes your children and your other family but you have to recognize that as as to that you're in that situation which can be difficult and also difficult to recognize that maybe you might be self-sabotaging yourself or your relationships. Yes, because I think we're the people are afraid. Marianne Williamson says it's not our, our we're so afraid of our power of our success. More so than our failure, right? Yeah, more so than our failure. That's what she says. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and being sick is never going to heal somebody else. Being poor is never going to help anybody. Any someone who's strong and healthy and abundant and stands in their power, that's the person that's going to serve and help somebody. Yeah. It's the opposite of what people think. I, I I think you're right. They and then when they can really see that for what it is, they recognize that if they are more abundant and it they they can do so much more um for for others. Um now when you typically tell us a little bit and for our listeners particularly, like how does the coaching relationship work because you are working on action items and I don't know like is it hey it's usually a one two year thing or how does it work what's the timing on um you know it depends on what they need I would say if you're going to do coaching it, you know I would engage for at least the minimum of three months depending on what you need six months sounds good a year some something like that but like a therapist I feel a good coach or a good therapist wants you out of their office because they did their job. They want you up and running and on your own. That's how I know I did my job when, when somebody doesn't need me anymore, but they've transformed themselves. I think that's a great point because that's the whole goal, right? Then they're ready to essentially launch, right? You have your objectives, which could take. Hey, you might, we might need to work on this three months. We might need to work on it six months, but eventually we want to achieve the objectives, right? So then you can say you're ready to go. Right. So I always say, if you, this was solved, you woke up and you didn't have this issue, what would your life look like? Mm -hmm. If your life looks like that, then we know they're done. 
for now until there's something else happens because that's life. Right now, when um, and I think that's great, and that also you know does touch on a little bit because sometimes therapy, I don't know, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not a therapist, so I don't know if it does ever have an end date or I mean, I guess there that is the goal as well, right? Like we're gonna resolve these issues so that you can then move on. Yeah, we don't need to be in therapy forever. I think with the way healthcare is going, that's been more and more the goal where you know, in the 80, you know, 80s or 90s or whatever it was, you could be in therapy forever. Uh-huh. <laughs> More so today, they really just want, you know, you have so many sessions or whatever it is, and then they're not going to pay for it anymore. True, yeah. true. But it could be obviously um, better if it's goal-oriented with objectives, like you said. So. I think so, because you, you want to go know where you're going. And, you know, you really want to heal. And sometimes a, some somebody can take you only so far and then you need to get somebody else to, to, to bring you the rest of the way. I've noticed that too in therapy. Um, now, do you, is your practice um, fully concentrated on all coaching um, or is there like just a strictly therapy component as well? Or is it all in No, intersect? I mean, it's a coach. I have a coaching practice, but because of my background in therapy, I have a flavor of therapy that I like okay. to add in, but it's a coaching practice. A coaching okay. Practice. Well, I think that gives, um, you know, certainly our listeners and women some real insight because it's like you said, it's just a, an added in, but you can bring more to the table because of your training yeah. um, and, and background for sure. Um, now um, I do, uh, we're about to wrap up, but I would like to know, Jenna, because I ask all of our, all of our guests, um, you know, before we go, if you can impart um, on our listeners, what you've learned about divorce and helping women throughout your career and life. Um, yeah, I have this in my podcast that, I've made, I vowed to myself that I was never going to love anybody more than myself again. And I was never going to betray myself now that I've made to myself that this divorce has taught me. And that's a lot. How do you keep that in check? I mean, you've got to be very aware about that, right? Well, I've developed a relationship with my heart that I never had. You know, you keep my heart open and I check in with it and say, what are you feeling right now? What do you think? What do you, what is, makes you feel good? Well, that's beautiful. You know, and we all ought to do that more often because yeah. I know that helps you show up to be able to help so many more people, I'm certain. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been it's been good and it's, it's trusting your guidance. And when you trust your guidance, you'll get more guidance. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate having you on our show today. Um, and, and for those of our listeners, you can find out more about Jenna at uh, www.instagram.com forward slash Jenna dot Jake forward slash. And of course her bio and all of her links are going to be provided in our show notes, as well as a link to your podcast, Soul Streaker podcast, which is also available on Apple podcasts as ours is as well. And once again, Jenna, it's just been such a pleasure. I really appreciate you giving your time to our listeners today. Thank you. And thank you so much for all that you do. You really are an example and a leader for women. And I appreciate it so much. Well, thank you, Jenna. And thank you to all our listeners today. And if you or anyone you know needs any help, we know where to reach us at Florida Women's Law Group. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Women Winning Divorce. My goal is to elevate your life and the way you are thinking so that you are best equipped to win at life. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe so you automatically get my new shows every week. And I would love to hear from you personally. Come join the conversation on social and join our Facebook group, Women Winning Divorce. We welcome your comments and suggestions. We want to bring you content that helps move your life forward. Women Winning Divorce is the place for an elevated conversation on how women can thrive during times of adversity in order to live their best life. Hurry in during Ram Truck Month and discover what it truly means to drive a truck that's built to serve. Ram Truck Month, going on now.
And now, current FCA vehicle owners finance and get $8,480 in total values on the 2023 Ram 1500 Bighorn Crew Cab. Don't miss this great offer. See your local Ram dealer today. Total values include combined cash allowance and 2,980 Bighorn Level 2 package value. Financing for well-qualified buyers through Chrysler Capital. Not all buyers will qualify. Residency restrictions apply. Take delivery by 5 23